Hey YouTube, Tom Houston of Tom Houston Photography here, and in this video I will be going over the first part of the exposure triangle. The exposure triangle are the three things that um, control for the exposure of your photos, which is how bright or how dark your photos are. The first is aperture, and then shutter speed, and then ISO. And those three things control how bright or how dark your photo is. So in this video, I will be covering aperture. The aperture is the pupil of a lens. It is a bladed diaphragm, which is a whole bunch of blades that either open up or close down to control how much light enters through into your camera. The aperture in your lens is measured by a number, which is the f value of a lens, or the aperture value of your lens. This lens specifically is an f 1.4 lens, which means its maximum size the diaphragm can open up to is f 1.4. And with aperture values and the diameter of your diaphragm, it is an inverse relationship, which means the smaller the number, the larger the diameter or the larger the number, the smaller the diameter. So a large aperture value would be a very small diameter of your diaphragm, which would let in not a lot of light. A small aperture value would be a very big diameter of your diaphragm, or big aperture, which allows a lot of light to come in. And this is how you use your aperture to control how much light enters in through your camera. You can either make your aperture larger or smaller. It's the exact same with an eye. Different lenses have different apertures, and different lenses can close down to different sizes of an aperture. This lens can go from f1.4 to f16. However, it is a prime lens, so it can always stay at its fixed aperture. Some lenses out there are variable aperture zooms, which means when you zoom in, the maximum size your aperture can be changes. I'll go into that in another video. This lens is an f4 lens, which means its maximum sized aperture is only f4. However, this lens can stop down or close down its diameter of its diaphragm down to a much smaller hole than this other lens. And this is good for landscapes because aperture controls, it also controls um, not just how much light enters into your camera, but it also controls the depth of field of your photo. Therefore, it controls how much of your photo is in focus. So for a portrait, you would want a very, very small depth of field, especially if it's a female portrait which means you focus on the model's eye or subject's eye and then you don't want anything else in focus. You want the nose slightly out of focus, you want the ears out of focus, you just want their eyes to be sharp. This is a very, very small fraction of the photo that is in focus, which would be a small depth of field. Whereas if you're taking a picture of a landscape shot, you don't want only a small sliver of the photo to be in focus, you want as much of the photo to be in focus as you can get. Which means that your foreground will be sharp, your midground will be in focus, and your background. This, you would have to use a smaller diameter, and usually it's between f8 and f11. That will get you your best results for getting the most of your photo in focus and sharp. Whereas with your depth of field for portraits, you want it to be very, very small, which is as big of an aperture you can get on your lens. To show examples, here's an example of a portrait I took with a 50mm f1.4 lens on a D90. And as you can see, the eye that's closest to you is very, very sharp. It's definitely in focus. However, everything in front of that point and behind that point gets out of focus very easily, which means that her hair on her shoulder is out of focus, 
the background is definitely out of focus, and that is known as bokeh, which is the out of the out of focus part of a photo. And this makes for a very good portrait because it allows the subject to be isolated in the photo because it is the only thing that is in focus. Whereas in this photo of a boardwalk, you want as much of the boardwalk in focus as you can get. So the boards in front by my feet are in focus, and then the boards going off into the background are in focus as well as much as I can get with the aperture I was using. If only one board was in focus in this photo and you had a very thin depth of field or very small depth of field, it wouldn't make for as good of a photo because you wouldn't be able to see the whole boardwalk. It would just go out into an out of focus blur. So aperture not only controls how much light is coming into your camera, but it also controls the depth of field. And in the last video of this series, I will go over how you can control your whole exposure triangle, so your ISO, your shutter speed, and your aperture to control for everything you want in your photo. However, for now, aperture is the pupil of your lens, so it lets in more light or less light, and that is a smaller aperture value number, so f1.4, f1.8, and then you can stop it down or decrease the size of your diaphragm, diameter of your diaphragm, and that is a larger aperture value like f8, f11, f16, and those would be smaller and smaller holes. And that also controls how much of your photo is in focus. The larger the diameter, the smaller the depth of field, the smaller the diameter, the larger the depth of field, or the smaller the aperture value, so f1.4 for instance, makes a very small depth of field, or the larger the aperture number, the larger the depth of field. Depends on which way you want to look at it. I hope that helps. If you have any questions, you can either look, check out my blog, which is down below, where I have gone over this, or you can just drop a question in the comments section down below, and I'll be more than happy to help you. It is a little confusing, however, after doing it for a while, you will get to know what you're doing with your aperture, and it does get easier. So I hope that helps, as I said, and again, any questions, toss them down below. And in the next video, I will go over shutter speed and how that controls how much light goes into your camera and the other things shutter speed um, affects with your photos. Cheers.